uh, we have this uh, this conversation, this fire chat uh, between my dear colleague uh, Massimo Massa and Miriam Staubisang, um, the director of uh, managing director of uh, Black Rock Switzerland. Um, uh, why, why, why are we having this session? Uh, remember, we are reflecting throughout the morning of what's different, what's common in governance practices, uh, and we were saying from the very beginning, uh, from uh, in the in the in the in the event, that the corporate governance um, space is getting more populated with more active actors. One of those very influential active actors um, in in corporate governance is uh, are the asset management firms. Uh, BlackRock is perhaps the most, the, 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 the number one of the most important, the most influential, uh, the biggest uh, asset management firm. So uh, we would love to hear from, from, from them, uh, from Museum, uh, what they do, how they work with boards, uh, what is important for them. I think it's, it's very important for all of us. And, and then we will reflect on it. Are what they do with boards, the way they work with boards, uh, getting kind of promoting a sort of, uh, um, Convergent model of corporate governance. This is kind of the underlying underlying thing. Uh, to to lead this conversation um, is my dear colleague Massimo Massa, uh, to whom uh, someone that doesn't need introduction because most of the participants in the in the uh, in the event have gone through his uh, wonderful sessions in finance. Uh, so um, Massimo, uh, we know that you are so busy. Thanks so very much for for your time, and uh, the the floor is yours and Mirjams. So thank you, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, uh, Jose Luis. Uh, Miriam, it's nice to see you back again after some time. And um, so let me ask uh, the first question that I think is uh, potentially the easiest to address. How do you, at the level of BlackRock, impact governance in the companies in which you have a stake? BlackRock has a stake in many, many companies. What is uh, the main line of impact and in which direction? Thanks, Massimo, for this interesting question. But first of all, let me thank you for being able to participate in this important conference. It's always a pleasure to be back at INSEAD. It makes me feel like a, a student back again 20 years ago or as director. Uh, I think it's, it's great you're putting this strong focus now also on governance and uh, on the education of directors, because this is just so important for, I think, our economy, but also the world and society. So it's the directors that can really uh, impact change. Now, coming to, to, to BlackRock and uh, how we uh, interact with companies as investors, perhaps first, uh, when we think of BlackRock, um, most of you might be familiar with the name. BlackRock is the world's largest asset managers manager with uh, above uh, 9 trillion in assets under management. That's about one tenth of uh, the world's globally managed assets. So it's very big and most of our investments, uh, most of our assets actually of these 9 trillion, um, approximately six and a half trillion are managed in index uh, funds or ETFs. So when we think of index funds and ETFs, uh, um, we as an investor don't really have the opportunity to um, sell those stocks that we hold because we have to invest according to the uh, index composition. And so our only way to actually influence um, the way these companies are managed um, is by having a strong an engaged dialogue with the company's management and the company's boards. So I would say it's, it's, it's really these three aspects is to engage with the company, to use the vote and more broadly um, to promote thought leadership. So I think that was a pretty long answer, but uh, hopefully set the scene for the discussion. Maybe following up on uh, your answer, uh, the starting point seems to like a regret we have 6.5 trillion uh, index, the rest is not index. We can do very little with in when we are indexed. Is it a feeling that uh, index tracking reduces the quality of governance? Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say so because uh, I think the tools that we have as an investor are incredibly powerful. Of course, I would say the, 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 the biggest threat to a company is 
when when we would say we we, would, we will sell your 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 stock if you're an important shareholder we hold about six about six percent that most uh, uh companies in the world the larger companies so if we sell your stock then then that that would be very powerful and you're right an index with as an index investor we can't so um uh, I'm, you know, if your question is if the whole world or all investors were going into index investing, uh, then we would all be trapped in these companies and couldn't do much. So I think uh, active ownership and the, the option to to sell and vote to your feet, I think, is 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 indeed very powerful and and complements the, the the shareholder engagement. But I would say, as a large shareholder, as a large index shareholder. Um, the companies actually listen very well, and uh, I actually recall a conversation which dates back maybe uh, a month or two ahead of the um, AGM of a financial services company, which is on the one hand a client, and I, I, I usually I don't uh, do I don't engage with company on stewardship issues. I, I I I engage with companies as clients, and so that was a financial services company, a bank. And the, 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 the chairman actually called me and uh, said, well, you know, BlackRock is, is, is pushing us to um, uh, provide transparency on our climate risks. And, um, and uh, they're pushing us to report against SASB, the Sustainable Accounting Standards Board. So it's, it's, it's a certain uh, um, reporting approach which is uh, highlights very well the sustainability risks um, in a certain sector to investors and BlackRock actually um, uh, pushes companies to adopt that framework and so well we're not quite ready yet we are uh, reporting against GRI the global reporting initiative which is another standard uh, perhaps less focused on investors and um, do I have to expect that BlackRock will not uh, will vote against my re-election? So I think it's very, very powerful if you have the chairman uh, call you. He's afraid of not being re-elected because uh, uh, the reporting is not done as transparently. So I think uh, even if we can't sell the stock as an index um, investor, to have these uh, voting tools is very powerful. In terms of uh, collaboration with other players in the market, uh, how much do you relate to this indicator or rating agency like ISS, uh, Glass Lewis? Because you mentioned about voting, but very often the vote of the big uh, investment firm is related to these, uh, I, I don't know if you define them as uh, rating agencies or scoring provider. So do you have an internal uh, view or do you follow their uh, recommendation? No, uh, we have uh, an independent team and form our uh, opinion very independently. We have the world's largest stewardship team uh, of, of, of any asset manager. So we have uh, over 60 people globally that just engage with companies and, and, and hold that dialogue. Um, we, and, and we, we do that very, very independently. You have a view of BlackRock for all the funds you manage. Yes, of course, for all the companies. You know, so whether, uh, say, for example, um, a company like uh, um, let's take anyone, uh, Nestle. Nestle, we we hold it uh, in probably uh, most index funds of a global nature, but also sector funds in active. Uh, we, we also hold Nestle in, in, in active investment funds. So uh, we, we then consolidate all these votes and vote for Nestle, say, with one vote. I mean, there's not the, 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 the portfolio manager of one fund which says, well, um, with my votes, I, I would like to support those um, shareholder actions. Uh, but not others, and then another portfolio manager would 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 have an opposing view. They all the portfolio managers they they would say delegate the the voting to the stewardship team. So BlackRock speaks with one voice for one stock as okay. a shareholder. And how do you select uh, the overall view? For instance, uh, 
the Larry Fink is very active or think like shorter means uh, and the letter that the US system is too short term. There are initiative on climate change on ESG. At which level have these initiative are these initiatives crafted? Um, so when we when we think about our sustainability initiatives and and especially the say activism, although I wouldn't call it activism, but our stance on um, sustainability, that is really a view which was formed at the very strategic level of the firm and it dates back a couple of years ago and probably had a, a first culmination a year and a half ago when we came out not not even a year and a half ago when we came out with our very distinct view that climate risk is investment risk and based on that we should integrate climate risk considerations in all our investment activities and, and sustainability risks as well and that sustainability should be our new investment standard and in that context you know we were thinking along say the, the, the investment value chain it's it's about you know say designing investment products it's about an investment process where we think about sustainability risks but it's also uh, in using our vote. What can we do as shareholders to have uh, to, to, to push companies to assume a more um, sustainable uh, investment strategy to be transparent on their climate risks and also to um, uh, show us a meaningful strategy how they are going to mitigate those climate risks because we feel as fiduciary to our clients uh, the best way we can serve clients is by addressing sustainability and climate risks as a shareholder um, and, and also by integrating it in the investment process of active investment portfolios as, as I said for for index investments for passive investments it's 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 really about uh, shareholder engagement Okay. It's very much, a, I would say, a top of the house view. Climate risk is investment risk, and we have to protect our clients' assets as good as we can. But do you have a feeling that on the active side, uh, you are more effective? On the passive side, you vote. On the active side, you can also vote with your feet and sell the share. Do you, from your personal experience, do you have a feeling that on the active side, you are able to be more effective in company which you have a bigger active share? Well, as I said before, it's, it's, it's very, very powerful. And I experienced that, I think it was about 10 years ago when I wasn't working with BlackRock at the time, but already very engaged on sustainability. And I had a conversation with the CEO of a Swiss company with a, with a, with a global footprint, but uh, at the time, or international footprint, but at the time, uh, uh, still today, a mid-cap company. And the company was run by the CEO who was at the same time the chairman, which from a Swiss co corporate governance perspective uh, was not uh, a proper thing to do. I, I think that, that view changed about you know, 10 years ago, I would say 20 years ago. There were a lot of CEOs we, which were at the same time chairman, but eventually good corporate governance would, um, would want to have the board separated from the operate, uh, operating management. And, uh, but this guy, he, he liked being CEO and he liked being chairman at the same time uh, and actually have all uh, his powers unified in, 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 in his, his role in person. And um, he, he then said, and I said, well, are you going to uh, are you going to continue with that, say, double mandate, uh, especially given that uh, sustainable investors will not like that and will not support that? I mean, that was early days, 10 years ago, and uh, BlackRock at the time probably didn't take much action yet. Um, and he said, uh, well, I'm actually thinking about it because there's this big pension fund uh, which is a big investor, almost holds 10% in the company, it's a mid-cap company, and they threatened to sell the position 
if I don't step down either as CEO or as chairman. And this will make me change. So I can say this is this might be anecdotal, but I would say today, uh, if um, an asset manager is, or, or a pension fund for that matter, is a, is a large active shareholder in probably a smaller company where selling the stock can really impact then the share price, that, that is uh, uh, indeed very powerful. But, you know, to be a large passive shareholder and to say, not actively threatened, but, uh, but for, for, for a chairman to be, to be afraid not to be re-elected is also very powerful. But uh, I think more broadly, I would also say, you know, to, to have a seat at the table is probably a better position to impact change than to sell and step away. So uh, to keep engaging with uh, a company's board or management uh, for, and, and to have that granted seat at the table um, is, I would say, long term, probably a better position to really impact change. And when we think of, uh, of the situation today where for climate risk reasons, um, say a lot of uh, company, a lot of investors will not invest in, uh, say for example, uh, thermal coal assets, uh, and will step away from those thermal coal assets. Well, what happens to these companies? Um, they will not find the support of shareholders anymore. Their cost of capital increases. Um, eventually, you would think, okay, a private equity fund will. Uh, will buy these assets at a discount. But also when we look at, at private equity funds today, most of them have a sustainability strategy because they attract big, um, big uh, uh, asset owners' capital, pension funds again, so in wealth funds, and they all request this sustainability uh, strategy. And the private equity companies, most of them will not invest in thermal coal either. So where do these assets eventually end up? In whose hands do they end up? And uh, I believe probably not the most responsible hands. And so I think for the world and society as a whole, it's probably better if responsible shareholders stay shareholders and try to influence um, the strategy of a company and where that company is going to, 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 to just clean its business up. You use the word uh, seat at the table and influence in general as a way of dealing with this company. Do you actively seat, uh, do you actually seat seats at the board? Do you interact more with the board or do you interact uh, directly with the management? Um, we would interact with both the board and the management and, and just keep that active dialogue, but very, uh, I would say, I don't have the exact numbers, but I would say probably the, the, the dialogue with the board, the chairman is, 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 is a priority. And no, we do not take board seats. So we're not an activist investor that will take a board seat and then you know really impact the strategy and eventually sell the shares again and leave but uh, rather just keep that engaged dialogue only the dialogue no seat at the table no seat at the board i mean in in in, in private companies of course uh, we're also a very large uh, private asset investors private equity investors there we would seek to take seats at the board but these are not co public companies and there we would just be a representative of the shareholder in a private company. But for the major company, for instance, you were mentioning Nestle, in which you may have a, a sizable stake. Don't you think a seat on the board uh, could potentially lever your position more and be more effective to improve the governance? Uh, it, it probably it probably could, but I think that's kind of a, uh, almost another business model. And uh, who would then take these seats at the board? Uh, we wouldn't have enough people to to actually represent us uh, at, at the boards and and also you know then how 
independently can these directors act? And I remember actually, um, I think it was about eight, nine years ago when this course started. And uh, I had the privilege of attending one of the first courses on corporate governance that was led at the time by Luther van der Heiden. And I also remember one of the first classes was about who do you serve as a director? And that led my thinking over the years. And to what extent can you only serve as a investor representative and not serve the company and the other stakeholders. I think it's quite a tricky position to be a shareholder representative in a board uh, and just think about um, the priorities of the shareholder and not take a much more holistic view, which I think is what you should have as a director. So uh, I think it's much cleaner to stay out of the board and not to take a board seat as an investor, then be the investor representative, but still uh, uh, serve the company as a whole. So if we learn- but that's, a, but that's a personal opinion. I never heard anybody at BlackRock speak about that. No, but you will, uh, be, this goes to the big debate about independent board member. You will feel that somebody who has a stake like BlackRock will not be an independent board member. Yeah, exactly. And then it would, and then the question will be, uh, you you know you you really just push for uh, the long term value creation uh, agenda, and you could say, well, that's in the interest of all the stakeholders as well. And you probably could do it like that. But uh, uh, personally, I feel the board is probably best served with uh, independent board members, which only serve the purpose of the company. Okay. Last question, because I see Jose Luis that is popping up. So I would like to ask you one question more, let's say broader, which is what do you think are the most uh, relevant topic or issue of corporate governance, regardless of BlackRock, but in general, that you expect to be important for the board of the future? Yeah, so I think for the board of the future, I observe, uh, I would say, two emerging topics next to, of course, you know, just the, the more general topics, but I think climate change for any company which is in a high carbon uh, emission business, anything to do with natural resources, but also production and what have you. So I think climate change is uh, topic number one uh, with investors globally today. And I think it will, stay that way for 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 quite a while be for the next decade or two when companies now have to embark on this uh low carbon transition journey um and 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 that needs to be say also managed at the board level uh managed strategically at the board level but also over the next uh two three decades um uh directors need to focus on uh on on these climate transition strategies and make sure that the the company attains to it so i think uh that's that's a top priority and i would say probably the priority number one that i observe with investors and then a second uh priority which has emerged i think with renewed strength last year um is the diversity discussion and diversity board diversity has uh, has been an issue for i would say the last, the last decade um but uh it's more than just board diversity it's diversity of the workforce and human capital management for any service company the human capital management pers uh, pers uh, um, perspective, um, the diversity, but but really also very much about racial diversity, gender diversity, and how to um, attract and develop talent. I think that's a top priority. So uh, if we if we think about sectors, then I think for any uh producing company or 
company having to do with natural resources and so on, there the, 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 the climate aspect and the transition to a low, low carbon uh, business model is key. Uh, and for all companies, but uh, probably more pronouncedly so for companies active in the service sector uh, is, is the um, human capital management and diversity of the, the workforce, which obviously is reflected uh, on a board level as well. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for uh, this uh, wonderful discussion. I leave the floor, perfect of time, almost unheard of, from an Italian to José Luis. <laughs> Thank well, you so, a, so very it's much. The Swiss to... It's the Swiss influence, must be the Swiss influence. Yeah. Thank you so very much to, to Massimo, uh, uh, and thank you too very much for, for Miriam. Uh, there is a word in one of the, the comments to in the chat on uh, a comment on, on your session is fascinating, and people really appreciate how open, how straightforward, how clear Miriam has been. So thank you to Massimo, thank you to you, uh, Miriam. A wonderful, a wonderful session. We appreciate that that very very much.